In this video, we're going to diagnose and repair Darius Twin for the Super Nintendo. This game came to me in a lot of video games recently purchased, but was found to be non-working when tested. To start, I've cleaned the contacts with rubbing alcohol, and I'll show you guys what it does when inserted into the Super Nintendo. As you can see, the game does not load. Every once in a while, the Super Nintendo does recognize an input, but that's it. As you can see, the cartridge itself is quite dirty and has some rear label damage. That said, it's not an expensive game, don't even know that it's really a good game, but it's something I would like to add to the collection, so let's see if we can fix it. To disassemble the game case, we'll grab our iFixit toolkit and install the 3.8mm game bed. This assembly is as simple as removing the two small screws located on the front of the cartridge. Now we can visually inspect for any obvious signs of damage to this cartridge. Before even inspecting the board, I've noticed these green marks on the actual shell itself. To me, this indicates that there is some corrosion and may point us in the right direction as the cause of this game not functioning. Taking a closer look at the board, I also see corrosion here. My guess is that some of these traces may have breaks, causing there to be no connection between the pins and the board. To assist in diagnosing the problem, we'll use our digital multimeter and check continuity. To do this, I have the multimeter set to resistance. To check for continuity, we'll place one lead at the pin and the other at the end of the trace. If the trace is complete, the meter will beep confirming continuity. As you can see here, we identified one of the broken traces. Here I'll mark the pin in question with a black sharpie marker to help identify it when we go to make the repair. And here we quickly identify a second broken trace on this side of the board. Once again, we'll mark this pin with a marker, and then we'll go on to test the remaining pins and confirm that they all have continuity. After checking both sides of the board, it is found that just the two broken traces on this side appear to be our issue. I'll now use the leads to scrape back some of the trace mask and help identify where the trace is broken. Once we identify the breaks in both of the traces, we will prepare the areas to make a repair. To make these repairs, we're going to experiment with two different types of wire, one of which is a solid core and the other is braid. I'll be upfront in this video and tell you that my soldering skills are novice at best, and this is the first time that I've attempted to repair traces in this manner. That said, we'll experiment, see what works, and hopefully we can get this game in working order. I've applied flux to the area and then we'll try to tin the traces a bit and then introduce the wire that we will use to make the repair. This portion of the repair seems to start out pretty good. It gets ugly for a second, but I think we do salvage this, so bear with me. As you can see, I'm able to get the solid core wire to solder to the trace. Then we'll bend it around to the pin and trim off the necessary amount. It's at this point in the repair that all hell breaks loose. As you can see, the solid core wire does move. We then end up with too much solder on the board, but we'll go back through and fix this with some solder braid. 
Eventually, we are able to move the wire back in place and successfully solder the pin across the brake to the trace. Now we will attempt to address the second broken trace using the braided wire. I'm hoping this one goes a bit smoother. We'll apply flux to the pad and then begin soldering the wire to the board. As you can see, we were able to get one end of the wire attached. We'll now route the wire and then solder the other side. As I mentioned, this is my first repair of this kind. I'm guessing the more you do, the easier this gets and you learn tricks along the way. That said, the main goal of this video is just to see if we can get this cartridge working again and I'll be happy if we can. Now that both wires are soldered in place, we'll go ahead and clean up the entire area with a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol. If the repair is successful, we can come back and use nail polish or clear coat to seal up the area later. This is always one of my favorite parts of projects, and that is cleaning everything so you can see what the cartridge looked like before we started, and then at the end of this little clip here, you're gonna see how nice this really turned out. The funny part is here, I'm probably spending just as much time cleaning the case as I did actually making the repair. But again, I plan to put this in my collection, so I want it to at least look nice. Just a heads up, if this were a more expensive game, I would use some more caution and be more careful around the label, but in this situation, not too worried. And here we have the top of the case all cleaned up. Tell me, does that not look fantastic? For the back side of the case where the label is missing, we're going to cheat. We're gonna take this copy of Lion King and we're gonna swap the backs. It looks like this Lion King board could use a video of its own. For a purist, this may be an issue, but for a copy of a game that's been repaired, I think it's okay to swap the cases. And now for the moment of truth, we'll see if our first attempt at repairing broken traces was successful. And it looks like it was. In doing some quick research for this video, I do see that fans of the Darius games don't really hold this one in that high of regard. That being said, we'll go ahead and give it a try. Before displaying how bad I am at shoot 'em ups, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch the video. As always, I look forward to interacting with you in the comment section below, and if you want to hang out, there's a few minutes of gameplay to follow.